Hey everyone and welcome to Television from the Multiverse, the DC TV podcast from Mailfuzz TV. I am Peter and over on the red corner is Connor. Yes it is. And I didn't mess that up, so points to me. So we thought about DC TV shows on this uh, on this particular podcast and we're in a bit of a weird place right now because we're in the off season. We don't have new episodes of Flash and Supergirl and Arrow and all those kind of things. Uh, what we do have is we do have DC Universe are given as Young Justice. So we've got the first three episodes of season three of Young Justice to talk about today. Uh, we also have some off season archive content and by that I mean a episode of the classic 90s Flash, an episode of season one of Gotham and an episode of Batman the Animated Series. So that is what we're going to be talking about. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see how much of Gotham I remember, because I was quite drunk. <laughs> I'll remind you. Mm. You know, Don't you worry. I saw something about this, you know, the, the, the latest season of Gotham. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm like, holy shit, that show. We'll get there eventually. Just uh, all I'll say is for, for anyone who's who's keeping up with with the show, and I, I'm I'm referring to the the the, the Catwoman incident, uh, and, and I think the last episode. What the damn hell? <laughs> Madness. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, but oh, you'll see. Yes. Um, so that's what's coming up with the show. That's what we're going to talk about. Uh, a little bit of news first as well. Um, this is a day later than normal. Connor's internet cut out uh, right before we started recording last night. So we're now recording this a day late, which means it's going up a day late, which means the new episodes of Young Justice being 4, 5, and 6 will already be available. And we feel like we're eternity late now. But hey, that's okay. I mean, you feel like we're eternity late. I'm not that bummed. It just feels late. It feels like, ah, oh, the episodes are already out. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. But hey, we're a week behind. We're in the past. It's fine. Uh, so yeah, that's what we do. So uh, bit of news first. Bit, bit, uh, bit of news. Um, we have so so we got premiere dates for stuff coming back. Uh, obviously, we already had the January dates for all the stuff coming back in January. We've had that for a while. Uh, but we got a date for Legends of Tomorrow, which is you know kind of when we expected. We knew it was coming back in April. It's actually April first, uh, April Fool's Day. So that's when you could expect season four to continue. Is it? It's a perfect day for Legends. It kind of is. Um, I wonder if that means if Black Lightning is actually is ending the week before. Is, is that when the finale yeah. is going to fall? It may be. Maybe. I know Legends is moving to a, the the earlier time slot as well. It's moving to the 8 o'clock slot. Is it? Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so, what's interesting about that, though? Wait, what's Flash moving then? I think you're mixing up what days. It's on with the other show we're about to get to, I believe. Is it not? Is it? April 1st is, I was under the impression, yeah, April 1st is a Monday. It is a Monday, yes. Yeah, is is the other show we're going to get to not on a Monday? Oh, it is. Well, no, I'm, I'm, you know I'm confused because last season Legends was on a Tuesday after Flash. So, in fact, it was for like three seasons. So Yeah, but it is me. a Monday now, isn't it? it is, yeah, it's a Monday after Arrow. No, yeah, the... Do you know what the problem is? Is we used to watch these every day and... And now it's just kind of we get to the end of the week and yeah, it's like, we watch okay, them all let's get basically to back to back. Yeah, so um, we don't really think about which day they're on as much. No, no, I was confusing myself. Yes, so so Legends we're back Monday, April first. So here's the odd part of this story. Do you know how last year we had that whole thing where Supergirl needed to take some time off because we're behind in schedule, and we got this weird thing where it kind of Legends took its slot, and then. It came back later. It came back, you know, Legends finished, then Supergirl jumped back in and then done its, done its last, like, eight or nine episodes from there. And it ended in June because it came back in April and it still had, like, nine episodes left. That's kind of happening again, although, we've not, at least as far as I, I can tell, there's been no news that there's a, a reason, like, a, a problem in this, the production. It's just that I wonder almost, because here's what's really intriguing to me about this, is this is the same time slot. It's the exact same time slot it's happening in. And I yeah. wonder, I wonder if they actually just liked having content in that slot going all the way into June. Maybe. Do you know what I think is particularly weird about this news is that I I didn't realise that this was even going to be a thing until they were like, oh, here's the new date. Yeah, yeah never told us anything. So what, what are we talking about? We're talking about Arrow, which after two episodes, because it's coming back in January, uh, you know, like next week, and, or the week after, whatever it is, it's coming back soon. After the 28th of January episode, which I think is the second one back. Yeah, it's, do, it's doing the 21st is when it's back. And 28th. It's then going on hiatus till April. 
It's coming back on April 15th. Yeah, so that's taking a good two and a half months off. So that, that we're getting episodes 10, 11, and then... That's like 12 episodes left. <laughs> Start Starting in April. It is, isn't it? How, yeah, how long does that take us up to then? Because uh, April, what did you say? 15th. And presumably there'll be no breaks, just kind of like last yeah, year with yeah. Legends and Supergirl. It should just run continuously because they're they're coming back later. God, 12 episodes takes us to the 1st of July. That is so weird. <laughs> um, bloody arrow till July. Now, I think the two reasons for this, one is that they probably liked having something in that slot as late as they did last year, and they thought, oh, we can do that again. And then two is that, obviously, they've got so many you know mid-season shows premiering, they want the slots to free up a little bit. So, at this point, I'm kind of half expecting this to happen again next year. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not with the exact same shows, but I'm Let's expecting say, do they it to rotate happen. the show every year? Um, it, it depends. I mean... Because next year we may have Batgirl, oh, not Batgirl, sorry, Batwoman as well in the mix. You wish. <laughs> oh, I, I do wish. I do wish we had Batgirl. Uh, but so yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's really interesting. Um, it, obviously, Arrow's the one that we like the least, typically. Not not all of us. There's some recent episodes have, have shown, but typically we, we don't like Arrow very much. So this is kind of this weird thing where it's going to be lingering way it's, past the rest of the episodes. It's kind of a punishment, right? Um, I've got no, I've got no, I've got no, nothing else to offset it, but I've got bloody arrow to watch. Well, here's the, here's the beautiful thing about this though for us in terms of our schedule. It means that we're not as packed. You know, it's, it's not going to be five or six shows for a good chunk of time. And if this is running into the summer, there's a good chance that we'll get to a point in the summer where at the start of the summer where Krypton might have launched. We'll have Arrow still, and we'll have uh, Swamp Thing or maybe Doom Patrol still going. We'll probably have like three new shows still. Early yeah, summer. there'll be a point. When does the because the second half of Young Justice comes back in the summer, right? Yeah, it overlaps with Swamp Thing, I think. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how early that was, if that would overlap with Arrow as well. It could do, um, which would be weird. It would cut down on how much archive episodes we have, but um, yeah, especially if Young Justice, if Young Justice, if Young Justice and Swamp Thing are on at the same time as Arrow and say Krypton, which might be on at that time. I mean, we don't know when Krypton's coming back. I, I'm theorizing it'll be slightly later. Therefore, it'll be sort of May, summer, uh, May, June kind of time it starts. Um, what's weird about that is that that's enough not to do any like uh, off-season content. Um, where it gets really murky though is when we only have three things because then it's kind of too little to, for a full show, but it's not. Yeah, quite Young Justice is uh, on. based on the old graph because they, you know, we got all those updated yeah. potential dates. There, there was never actually you know, a, a date for the second half of Young Justice, so based off that graph, it covers uh, all of June and the first week of July. So, right where Arrow is. It's good for hey, it's good for our content it's, in terms of us having so, things to talk so about. So we'll have the end of the Arrow season. The first half of Swamp Things season, you know, in terms of how many episodes we'll get to, plus the back half of Young Justice at the same time, and possibly Krypton. Possibly, I mean that that seems like a likely place for it, but yeah. the others are all kind of guaranteed. So no, um, I, I think I think we said last year when we were talking about DC Universe becoming a thing is that. It may actually help with when things get really quiet in the summer, but hey, look, it actually is in this case. <laughs> Summer's already yeah. looking a bit more active because of it. It is, yeah. Um, so, no, we'll, we'll see how that works out. But yeah, so Arrow's going on hiatus after the 28th of January until the 15th of April. Do you know what really threw me about this news, though, is is all the articles telling us about it. Didn't talk about it. They just sort of said... They were just like, yeah, Arrow's back then. I'm like, wait, 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 wait a second. <laughs> When did we have the news that it was going on a break after two episodes? Basically this. Just no, no one seems to act, be acting like it's much of a surprise. <laughs> no, no one seems to care because it's Arrow. Yeah. I remember when this happened to Supergirl last year and there was articles everywhere. Yeah. Um, and also, obviously we don't cover this, but uh, iZombie's fifth and final season is coming on May 2nd, which I'm just noting because it's even it's the latest it's ever been. It's basically a summer show at that point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they're going to, which, which makes sense because they want summer content this year. Yeah, but I mean, it actually lines up quite well with Arrow to the point where they'll be finishing comparably the same time. I Zombie will be slightly later, but not by much. Yeah, a few weeks, maybe towards the end of July, that'll finish. I think. Yeah. So there you go. Um, yeah. Arrow's coming back on April fifteenth after a two two episodes. 
Uh, my liver is going to be so confused. Which which means after, when Arrow goes on break, we're going to have Black Lightning, Supergirl, and Flash, plus, plus Doom, Patrol. Doom Patrol. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, we might even do an animated uh, Batman episode each week, even with the regular co- sh- shows on. Yeah, we might. Because there'll be room for it. Um, Especially when, because we'll get weeks when some of those other CW shows take the week oh, off I mean, as well. If, yeah, if, if, if those CW shows take the weeks off, we'll be slotting in nineties Flash and Gotham as well, uh, yeah. sprinkled in. It's it's harder to predict at this t- this back half of the season because they tend to take a lot of random one and two week breaks here or there. Yeah, there's times that we often don't realize until we're on the next episode. It's like, oh, there, there was no episode this week. Yeah, what, what pretty much. There? <laughs> oh, it's not back for three weeks. Okay, fine. Let's make some plans. Um, so here's some other news um, about the Batwoman pilot. Uh, we already kind of knew it was shooting in April, but I guess it was never official, but now it is. So, uh, it's the... kind of non-news, even though it's actually the news. Yeah, they've, gr- they've greenlit, they've greenlit um, the Batwoman pilot, which will shoot in April. Uh, David Nutter's going to direct. He's a common TV director. You see his name popping up all the time. Um, uh, scripts from Caroline uh, Dries, or Dries, or whatever you pronounce her name. Um, so there you go. That's the that's the thing. So, just a little side thing because I think we kind of really spoke about this news properly before. Oh, right? really? Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. not really news news. It's just kind of like official. It's just like so I'm it's gonna confirming it. Tangent my way back to something else. Okay. Uh, I was looking to see if there was any other dates confirmed for you know like that because I thought the Flash is the first show back. I wonder if we had any further. We if we could predict when the first break was. Mm-hmm. We can't, but they had the the, ne- the episode titles for the next one in, uh-huh. and it's called The Flash and the Furious. <laughs> I kind of love them for it. I don't even like those movies, but I kind of love it. It's not the best, but... No, but I just love that they go, screw it. Legends, di- Legends did all the crazy titles we want in, because Arrow did Slabside Redemption. That's a good point. Legends started this, but they started doing lots of puns based on movie titles. Yeah, and they, and they were like, "No, oh, we want in on this." Mm. Mm. Spreading. Uh, seemingly, seemingly it is. Uh, so no, it will be interesting to ha- see how they handle Batwoman if they end up with that, because they'll end up with six shows, and mm. I feel like they'll want Batwoman to premiere. I mean, I could I could see them moving either Legends or Black Lightning to to mid season if they wanted to, or outright summer. Or yeah, or, or, or summer. Um, I'm not going to jump to that, but I mean, it's not it's not impossible. I, I think if they've got six shows, they can have four plus a mid season, plus a summer quite comfortably, and have year round DC content. Well, they they can do, but I don't think they're going to. No. No, I I I think we can schedule out a more sensible schedule for them, and we've tried, we've done it every year where we've said this is what they should do, and every single year, no, they're just all six at once. They do it every year. See, no, this is true, <laughs> but they've never had the summer as an option before. This is new. It's game-changing. Mm. They're going to utilise it. You, you, you watch. I don't know. Summer TV usually sucks. They'll have some shitty specific summer thing. Yeah, well, probably, or it'll be the one with the lowest ratings. They're like, well, maybe I'll be fine for the summer. Okay, I guess we're waiting for Legends then, till summer. Yeah. yeah. This but is your fault. All I'm saying is, it will join Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in great <laughs> things that we have to wait for summer for. This is true. This is true. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to make the summer a nice, nice time. Um, mm. So yeah, Batwoman's pilot has been green. Now, a couple of quick bits of casting, not huge things. Uh, Luke Wilson is going to be in uh, Stargirl. <laughs> Yeah, he is, isn't he? Uh, a stripe. Yeah. Interesting. There you go. Um, again, adding more characters, more GSA and sidekick characters. Yeah. Uh, filling out that. And then the other bit of casting is for Swamp Thing. Uh, Leonardo Nam has been cast as Harlan Edwards. Uh, you know him as the technician dude in Westworld. Um, although this article ah. points out that he was also Milton Point in The Flash, so he's he's got some DC ties as well. Was he? Yeah. Okay, I don't remember that well enough, clearly. <laughs> yeah, I don't that remember episode my, was not that memorable. Cool, apparently so, but there you go. Uh, so that is the news. 
Uh, so we'll get on to obviously the main event of the week, which is the, the only new content we're discussing, which is, which is the first three episodes of Young Justice Season 3, or Young Justice Outsiders, as you might want to call it. Um, I'm just going to put it out there. I don't think we need any other content. Young Justice is enough. It's not enough for I'm the whole show. I'm done for the year. No, it's not enough for the whole show. Uh, so we have... Uh, episode 1 is called Princes All, Episode 2 is called Royal We, and Episode 3 is called Eminent Threat. And the reason why I'm telling you all three titles right now is because this is basically an hour-long episode that's chopped into three, and there's not really any point to try and break it up and talk about each one individually. See, that's interesting, because I kind of disagree. Because I watched these all separately. I watched them, uh, I intentionally staged them out, and I felt there were very distinct episodes. I, I can see why, like, at the ho- at the end of the one, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I can see it. But I actually felt like each one had its own identity for me. And uh, the first one had a slightly different identity because it was more recruiting. But I mean, I, I can tell you what the end of episode two was, but I really had to. I have to think about it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. The, the, it, maybe this is because I watched them separately. They just it, it may be, but I, I, I to me it felt like very intentional because we said this about season two's first three episodes. How it was very clearly a three part yeah. kind of introduction to the season, and this is kind of the same thing. Um, arguably, this is even more serialized than it's ever been. Um. Do you know what I thought was really weird? Mm-hmm. The endings. The quiet uh, piano over... over... Over just an image. Yeah. yeah. Thought, Even the opening titles, uh, it's just like this really ambient version. Because you know, the main, main theme from the first two seasons was like just a quick kind of like synthy guitar kind of thing. It was really bombastic. Loud. Yeah. Whereas now it's like very ominous and just kind of... You can hear the theme in there, but it's very... Mm. You know, subtle and... Before we even get to the, the theme of the show... We we have to you know we're okay they've 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 changed up what they're doing for the the opening credits uh, for the DC universe. You know now it's no longer the Titans music. Yeah, but we weren't expecting that though, right? No, but this this didn't feel like just the Young Justice theme either, or am I misremembering? Um, no, it's not. But I'm just expecting each show to have its own thing, or, you know, its own music playing over that. Well, maybe that I was wondering because this one was specific because you know with with Titans it did the titans theme and this one wasn't a version of the young justice theme so i'm wondering is this something going forward that we'll use no i i assume it's up to the creators of the show what music they want to put there and titans they chose to just put their main theme over it and young justice went no we'll have just a, a specific piece of music that'll play over well, yeah we're, we're not lazy <laughs> we're not lazy sure <laughs> um yeah I, I don't think it means anything like i, I feel yeah, like fair. some shows might put their main theme so, some might not like it wouldn't surprise me if it's all, they all have their own specific thing, but Titans maybe actually in season two gives it its like specific piece of music, but it's still unique to Titans what plays over. Yeah, it. I'm, I'm wondering if there's like a fallback option, like if they don't want to do a specific thing, it's like here's the stock, the, the thing that you can play over it from. Oh, just, just like from yeah, DC. just like like Warner Bros and Fox, where you don't always hear their music at the start, but yeah, uh, you often will. Yeah. But I, I was wondering if maybe this was that stock. I can't like, okay. believe we spent two minutes on this. <laughs> it, it, it really it intrigued me when I heard it. It was the first thing that I noticed. <laughs> Told you, I can get a whole show out of this. Oh, dear. Um, so, two years have passed, which made me laugh because it's less of a tame jump than season one to two, even though in real life it's been <laughs> like seven, Five eight years. Five goddamn years or something like that. Oh, it's been more than that. Has it? Because season, uh, season two, I think, was like 2011, 2012. Not that long. God damn it, it's been a long time. Yeah, so, I mean, it's 2019 now, officially, so... Oh, shit, it is. So, <laughs> so it's been like seven years. You, you might be right. God damn it. It's a hell of a job. It's a hell of a job. It's, it's, do you know what, it's so much of a job that even though a lot of the voice casts are back, they still sound different because they've all gotten older. <laughs> I don't know, the last episode was 2013. Oh, was so, it? Okay, so it was 2012 to 2013. Though. I I was thinking five because at least I'm my head's still in 2018. All right, six years. Though. All right, which yeah. is exactly in the middle between what you and I both said. So it is. So we'll yeah. we'll both take the win. <laughs> anyway, um, stop sidetracking me. But two years have passed, and our original team have kind of spread out. If I, if anything, what I noticed about this was kind of weird to me. And not, this is not a complaint per se, because obviously I care about these characters because they are the team that I, we grew up with. Well, I grew up, you know, <laughs> you know that we, we had the show with all, yeah. you know, first two seasons. But it really felt like to me, like, okay, here's a bunch of the, the new youngins. You, you see Stephanie Brown, you see Cash, you see Tim, you see you know, Bart's still there, of course, a little bit older. Um, 
but they're most i mean i'm sure we'll get episodes focusing on them but for at least these first three episodes no 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 no. the important characters are, are dick it's you know it's connor it's artemis you know it, it's the characters we know uh, with these, and then black lightning <laughs> also <laughs> yeah and black lightning yeah and black lightning um but it, it's characters that we know and what was funny to me is that i'm like you know after a five-year jump and then a two-year jump these characters ain't that young anymore <laughs> i mean <laughs> <laughs> they're all like 25 no it's it's why um i actually made a comment uh to, to her that i think young justice is a very misleading title it is because it's just a dc universe show it, now honestly my only complaint then at that point is not so much that because i want to follow these characters my complaint is just just call it something else <laughs> yeah but would you be more annoyed if they called it something else for season three no, see, this is the one time they could get gotten away with it because it was moving to a new service, because it felt like a fresh start. This is the yeah. one time they could have done it and it wouldn't have felt this, that weird. No, I get that, but it's uh, brand recognition, isn't it? It's like, yeah, let's get all those people that like Young Justice to make it very clear. No, just, here's more. Just call it <laughs> Youngish Justice. <laughs> God, so that has no ring to it whatsoever. <laughs> All right, call it call it um, millennial justice. <laughs> For God's sake. This is this is why they just called it Young Justice and stuck a tag on the end of it. See, this is the problem with them calling it Young Justice. The original show. I mean, if they called it Teen Titans, they could just call this Titans, and it'd be fine. No one would be questioning it. I mean, we just had a show called Titans, so we wouldn't be calling it that. True, true. That, okay, that's the one downside. But forget that show exists for a second. They could have called Gladly. this Titans. Um, that's that's the real problem here is that they've got another show called Titan, so they couldn't name it anything else. They had to stick yeah. to Young Justice. Oh, stupid bastards wasted the title on that show. Yeah, but what could you have called that show though? Anything else? Or, just, <laughs> you could, uh... or, or hear me out. Don't make it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I liked enough of it not to be wanting it not to be made. Oh, I don't know about that. I, th- I think I, I think I, I crossed that line, although I still had a lot of problems with it. <laughs> especially that finale jesus christ um so uh, the justice league has some problems uh uh you know aqualad ba- is now aquaman batman's pulling a coup ba- batman's pu- you know pulled some because t- he, he comes because tim's holding cassie's hand and he's, he's pulled his little coup and he walks in like tim it's time to go and he's like yeah sorry cass i let you go he's like what yeah. tim what's happening and like, all the bat characters are just going batwoman's there in, hol- in hologram form and they're all disappearing um and it's like green arrow's like nah we're not we're not working as part of the because you know the un keeps like tying our, our finger you know, yes our, because because a certain mr legs luther is running the un <laughs> <laughs> but it so much red tape the batman and green arrow and a few others are basically like can we just go back to being like proper vigilantes who do things off the books <laughs> and like do things done. yeah yes um which you know as much as it is technically uh you know murky but it was always murky and it's how they started <laughs> so yeah i think i think it's murkier to go back into that though, sure. isn't it yeah but uh yeah so because because one of them mentioned something about how there was like a natural disaster somewhere and they couldn't go because of political reasons till it just help you know just save people humanitarian aid yeah, yeah. And... You know, it, it's funny because i've been reading the uh the 80s justice league you know the, the just league international mm. stuff and the the idea of oh should we work with the UN is very much a part of, an early part of that run, and I kind of assume that it gets to a point where it's like hang on a second, we're getting a bit tied up with the UN here. Yeah, I get it. Part part of being a superhero is that you don't work inside the system to a point. You can just yeah do things because it's the right thing to do, um, and that's when all the debates about is that just you know should should they be governed blah, blah 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 right it's a whole thing to get into and i'm sure the show will tackle it to, to some extent as we yeah as we i vote. feel like that'll be a large part of what this season is so the plot of this because this is the thing we know we're getting dark side even the opening tight because obviously we had the cliffhanger at the end of the season two the opening titles of this comes up you know it says earth and then it says apocalypse apocalypse this is a big part of the season but not yeah. yet the no, actual yet. plot so far not a hint of it i know so right now we have have a whole situation where because of the thing right i feel like this show is clearly not for kids anymore because the plot of these first three episodes is about meta human trafficking where children are being abducted and experimented on and sold as slaves to, to militaries yeah. around the world right this is like super dark 
and we have you know we get a little cameos from characters uh you know gars like got a star trek knockoff tv show that he's doing. i love that finally gars the actor yeah because yeah that's uh that, that's a big part of his origin yeah, in the comics but in young justice it was uh whatever it still kind of works here though because it's, it's like he's taking after his mother because his mother was an actress yeah uh so you know that works uh but yeah, McGann doesn't go with him on the mission, but the, the, the first episode is Dick's not been with the team. He's been doing his own sort of thing, sort of covertly. Uh, but he comes back to re- re- recruit a few members. He's got Oracle talking in his ear. Oracle's a thing. Interestingly, he doesn't tell anyone else about Oracle. Yeah, yeah. Oracle's Oracle's not the there for everyone yet. Because obviously, eventually, Oracle becomes there for all superheroes. She becomes this, yeah. you know, this watchful eye for everyone. Um, right now, it seems to be she's there for the bats. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, the, there was a point where she's typing on the, the eye lens to mm. Dick and, and he reacts. And I think it's Artemis who's with him. And Dick's like, oh yeah, Artemis doesn't know that, 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 that Oracle's on the other end of this. <laughs> yeah. Got to pretend I was talking to her. So because so they're about to go to Markovia because there's a whole plot where uh, the, 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 the general's like wanting to, you know, he, he's, he's into the whole the meta-human trafficking. The king and queen are there. You, you've got the, the elder prince... Uh, or the younger prince, sorry, because the they're twins, they were born like 60 minutes apart. The slightly younger prince, he wants to kind of unlock his meta gene. He actually is working with a scientist. He wants to to be, he's like, Markovia needs a hero, is, is basically his yeah. thing. Um, so that's going on. We get parts of this as it's going. But Dex try to assemble this mission. There's no superheroes allowed in Markovia, so it can't be Young Justice, it can't be a Justice League, it has to be Black Ops, they're off the books. Yes. So it's him, Artemis, he, they convince Black Lightning. And in Black Lightning's uh, having some issues because he zapped a, a meta uh, in space, actually. They were on, like, Ran, I think it was, at the start. And uh, I think so, yeah. He zaps, like, this meta monster-looking thing, and then it, like, kills the kid, and it turns out to be a girl who's, like, 14, and he's, like, you know, it, it, it very much plays like a cop who accidentally shoots a kid and is, like, distraught yeah. about it and, you know, uh, can't doesn't know what again. he's doing, yeah. Uh, so he, he, he is convinced because he wants to come and help stop this and uh superboy comes you got a super psycho and that, that's kind of the setup i mean that's the, that's the three episodes is like the t- episode one is the recruitment episodes two and three are very much the mission, the mission and yeah. coming in and and doing this and seeing what they can pull off yeah uh, and it goes disastrously wrong almost immediately um that's i was laughing how these things work well, right? because D- dick when he showed up to uh to uh connor's because connor's of him mcgann and he was like, uh, very openly as a white Martian now. Yeah, well, she's still humanly shaped, but yeah, it's, she's she's. But she's not green. Yeah, but he sh- he shows up and he's like, "Oh, Connor, this will be a quick in and out, you know, back in a day," <laughs> and, uh, and like, you know, cut to halfway through episode two, and Connor's in a test tube again. <laughs> yeah, there, there's so, so many good things that that moment where you know when when Dick, I think it was Dick, finds out, he's like, "Oh, he is not going to be happy about this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something Artemis talking about. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He ain't going to like this. Yeah. Um, so that was delightful. It was calling back to the show's show's origins. Um, uh, and again, going back to this not being for kids, the king and queen of Markovia get brutally assassinated. You don't, I mean, it happens off camera, but you still have the scene of the like, the, the sons come in the bedroom and their, their bodies are lying there with blood, like, you know, all over the sheets. Yeah. And I'm there's, like, there's, yeah. there's so much, like, the idea of, of uh, the way Markovia treats, uh, you know, the, the uh, mere humans and banning them, it feels very much like uh, banning all immigrants for fear of terrorism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're, pl- they're playing with social themes here. They are, and uh, it's really interesting to see them just go, screw it, we, we, we've got the freedom to go all in on these things now. And it kind of further solidifies that this show is at the standard that it is, because... One of the things we talked a lot about in season one and two is the fact that they have continuity. It's something that got even better in season two, where they, they stopped trying to make it be more... Because season one had the continuity, but it was, it was very simple in the sense, for most of the season, where it was like, okay, standalone adventure, oh, this ties into the light, right, at the end. Right, that was kind of the continuity of season yeah, one, for the, the most part. Yeah, a lot of the continuity was in the team building, though, yeah. and the characters. Which is fine, but that's a very standard TV version of continuity. Uh, yeah. And then season two kind of went further with it. And then this season, the fact that you have even more continuity, but you're also adding in, no, we're going to tackle issues. We're going to tackle things like this. We're going to, we're actually going to use our superhero stories as a, as a analogy or, or whatever for, for real world things. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's like, well, you're actually doing like, you, 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 you're a proper TV show now. And that's not to say that it wasn't before, but just in my head, I'm thinking 
it's 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 above the bar of what you expect from an animated show and is on the level of just what you expect from good tv as yeah a whole. like way above the level i expect from an animated show there's a reason why i don't watch that much animated shows because i i expect a certain kid level standard which isn't a bad thing it's just what they are but this yeah, is not that because a lot of animated shows are aimed at kids not not all but a lot vast and, majority uh, I'd, I'd say like 95 percent, yeah. if not at more. least in western animation yeah yeah Oh yeah, if you, uh, if you bring it in Japan, it gets yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's best to keep it to, to Western animation. Yeah, yeah. the majority is aimed at kids, and that's fine. Um, and and that's what the, what's so interesting about this show is it was aimed at kids at first, and it kind of just it, but it tried to be inclusive of of the adults as well. But basically, right? the creators got a bit aspirational and just kind of went for it. Yeah, and it kind of led to the downfall at the time. It did, but now but... It, it, it it returns a triumph. Yes, yes. They lost the battle battle of Serenity Valley, but in DC Universe they found their ship and found Serenity. God's sake. That wasn't a reference to the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I don't know why you're... It was close enough. <laughs> I don't know why you're going to be for it. What could I say for Firefly? The criminally... Uh, Miss TV show Firefly. <laughs> underwatched. Yes, yeah, criminally underwatched Firefly. Um, mm. But yeah, so yeah, these three episodes were really good. Just as if that wasn't clear, these were good. There's, so, like even before we get to the, there's some just other side things that I'm so into. The the idea of okay, uh, Calder is now taking over the mantle of Aquaman and is uh, co-leading the Justice League with Wonder Woman. Mm. Like that is. Fascinating to me. I, I I believe the the idea is that you know Aquaman Arthur was just like you know what I've got too much responsibility as a king. I can't be doing the the Justice League as well. <clears throat> um, so Calder steps up, which makes sense, right? Yeah, no, it does. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of a lot of things like. By the way, was it still Tim Curry doing? Uh... No. Yeah, no, it, I, I thought it sounded um... different. It's oh god, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, James Arnold Taylor. Taylor, mm. I recognised him. Yeah, it was. I was like, ah, that's not Tim Curry. No, that's not. Different. He's a very good voice actor, though. Taylor. I, mm. I, I mean, at least in my opinion, I think he's excellent. Yeah, but I mean, you gave me Tim it's Curry. It's not quite the same. And then you yeah. took away Tim Curry, so like, I'm going to notice that. I can't argue with that. I'm going to we got that. Uh, we got a Courtney Whitmore. We do. We do have a Courtney Whitmore. Yeah. Um, who? I mean. <laughs> She doesn't feel like when she's there. She's there as a cameo, essentially. She's not really Star yeah. Star Girl per se. Maybe not she'll yet. maybe she'll become Star Girl. I think Girl. that's uh, that's season four material, right that's there. It, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, the biggest cr- cr- criminal like, thing of this this trio of episodes is that Stephanie Brown is not given at least one line of dialogue. The bastards. <laughs> hey, just, we'll get there. She's just standing there with a the group like she's just one of the yeah. pack. How dare you? So, uh, so some other interesting side chris obviously we're dealing with uh brian who's you know geoforce mm-hmm. and he mentions his sister do, do do we think we're getting to to terror later this season um because i mean she she would have got her meta powers yeah probably if, if we do i'm expecting deathstroke as well which i mean isn't outside the realms of possibility. We, yeah, we had Deathstroke in season two. That's true. Um, my, my, my only doubt about that though is that if we're doing all this stuff with the, the I mean, I, I guess, I get maybe if the whole Markovia stuff, the point of this is to get to Terra and get through some of that plot with Deathstroke, and then the back half of the season is more weighted towards Apocalypse and Dark Side. Yeah, I'm just thinking in terms of. Uh, I get that, that just is there. You know, we're setting up the outsiders, right? That's the point here. Is that's yeah, what yeah. the team we're building. Um, but I assume that we're still going to have some level of personal matter for, for the characters, uh, especially these new ones, you know, like Brion, who we, we spend a reasonable amount of time setting up in these episodes. Mm. It makes sense to give him a, a personal foe later with, with Terra. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd, ex- I'd expect Deathstroke. I'd expect... Because um, it feels weird to do Terra without the Deathstroke attachment to it. I agree. I can see the the reasoning to do it in this particular instance when you're doing it as a family connection rather than through mm. through any sort of Teen Titans. But I can yeah, also see them just using Deathstroke. Why not? Yeah, I can see it. So 
No, I mean, I, they, I think the. I mean, probably the weakest part of the three episodes it may be the final fight and stuff. Just at, you know, towards the end when it's all going off at the party and. Yeah, it's it's still pretty good. Yeah, it's fine. It's just it's just not the standout. Like I think for me, all the character stuff was a standout. It was like seeing oh, the definitely. characters again. It was it was them working together. It was you know moments like Black Lightning showing up at the last second to go on the mission. It was you know simple stuff like that. Yeah, that made it work. Um, I did laugh actually at one point in the the UN. It's like cutting around all the, the representatives, and there's like someone from Themyscira, and there's someone from Atlantis, there's someone from yeah. all these places. Um, so, yeah, because so, it was uh, it was Garth from Atlantis, wasn't it? It was Garth. Yeah, I was right. Um, mm-hmm. It was just some of what they were saying was cracking me up. Uh, just just the way they were phrasing things based on where they were from, uh, from all yeah. these DC places. Um, like like I think the the, the one from Themyscira, I, I can't remember what she said exactly, but she said um, when she was talking about picking someone to do something, it was like uh, should hurt or him. <laughs> and it was just it was the way she yeah, said hurt. The, the, the leading with the woman yeah. first. And I just yeah. it was like, and the him even felt kind of like almost a little bit like afterthought. <laughs> Uh, she was like, "Oh yeah, should should include the the blokes too." Yes, um, so I enjoyed that. Mm. Uh, like, you know, obviously there was a lot of espionage in this. There was a lot of like finding hidden doors and here's the hidden lab. Here's the the evil scientist and the the second. I mean, actually, if I, if I was going to have a critique from a storytelling point of view, I'd say that the woman uh, Jace, the second mm. scientist, who. Who Brian seems to like trust at trust first. Trust a little bit more. Yeah, it's yeah. the family doctor, I think. Um, I thought her tur- like tur- finding out that she was actually kind of in cahoots with all the villainy stuff just felt a little bit, a little bit murky. It didn't really feel like there was like a sort of twist where oh no, she's actually a bad guy, which would have been fine or you know good or bad, whatever. Yeah. Um, it felt just kind of like we just kind of slipped into it, and it was like we're just doing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get that. I get um, that. Just a little bit oh, murky yeah. in terms of like clearly defining it. I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. I really enjoyed all the stuff with Vertigo. Yeah, yeah, Count Vertigo's there. He's like the the meta who's kind of like controlling a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Um, and he's you know hurting the others. Uh, they they also send a because we we meet a new character. Uh, the the girl who's been buried that uh, yes. Artemis goes and saves. Uh, although <laughs> Artemis ends up being saved by her repeatedly. Uh, because the she's girl useful, isn't she? Comes back to life because the the thing she's dead. So I'm assuming she was technically flatlined. Uh, given what we see later, yeah. yes. At first, I assumed that they just didn't notice. Yeah, um, but she does force fields, force fields, and blasts and things like that. Um, I don't know off the top of my head who this character is. If this is someone from the comics, um, I'm I wasn't too familiar yeah. immediately either. So I'm liking this. Could, I could, mean, but it could well be someone. They, they, it wouldn't be the first time they do a deep pull. Yeah, a deep pull where you know uh, uh, an obscure character from somewhere. That unless you're a fan of that particular comic, they introduced them. In yeah, the 80s probably or whatever. don't know who they are. Yeah, um, but it also could be a new character because they've added a few new characters in the show over over time. Yeah. So I, I could see that. Um, ah, and the writing has not missed a beat in terms of character dialogue. No, it's not. No, that stuff's great. Um, yeah, if, if anything, I'm just disappointed there was no whelmed comment. We, we did get an Aster. Ah, uh, true, true. You know, I'll, I'll take what I can get. Yeah. Was also, that, he was feeling the Aster. Also, um... Who was it that said Crash? Because it wasn't Bart. Someone else said Crash and it made me it, laugh. It, it was Oracle. It was Oracle, yeah. Someone said, so, oh, like, that's Crash. And I was like, oh, that damn yeah. Bart, he's spreading it. Yeah, he's it was, spreading uh, it amongst people. Bart was wearing the, the, the Kid Flash outfit now, right? Like, uh, properly. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah, he's not Impulse anymore, which, again, ties into the comics. Um, that said, though, I, um, <sighs> do you know what? It'd be such a non-thing for this show to get rid of Bar- Barry if Barry sacrifices himself so that Wally can come back and Wally becomes the Flash, right? Yeah. We can do that. I'm just saying. We could. We could. I'm just saying. That's it in the Flash on CW where they're scared to get rid of Barry. No, 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 no. We can do it. Yeah, yeah. Who ca- it's, it's Wally we care about on this show. Yes. No, one, no one gives a shit about Barry. So It's just there every so often. So we can totally do that. It's fine. Um, <laughs> so... No, and that was really good. Uh, the, the, you know, uh, like I say, all the snooping around was fun. Um, the action with Vertigo was fun. And it's, it's set up a lot of, I, I think the most impressive thing though was just the themes that it's playing with and yeah. the, the dark side of, of the, the plot, essentially. Uh, yeah. Whether, whether they're, they're actually taking kids and experimenting them and, you know, putting them in ditches. Like, I actually think this is too dark for that. Like, if they tried to do this in season one, they would have been censored heavily from like, just you know. Just... Oh yeah, there's, there's no way you get this on yeah. Cartoon Network. Yeah, they, they've just been told no, you can't do this. You have to change the plot. Um, so I, I am glad that it's 
things have worked out unshackled and that it's unshackled without feeling like it's, it's suffering because they have too much free reign because sometimes that's a thing that can happen you know we've seen that in the past where people go oh i can do what i want now and mm. it kind of goes a bit off the rails um this does not seem to have suffered from that at all yeah no at least not yet i mean it could i suppose yeah i wonder like i wonder if they knew the, how they were being released when they first wrote these because I was thinking about this as I was watching them, the, the choice to still have them in 22 to 25 minute episodes, when, to me, this felt like an hour-long story, and I'm like... I, I'm going to assume no, based off of, you know, the, the new episodes are out, and I haven't seen them, obviously. Yeah. But I did see someone mention they were much more, uh, they were more varied episodes. Yeah, that's fair. Cause I'm, so... Because I'm wondering, like, well, if you know you're going to put them out over, say, I mean, what is it, eight weeks? You know, because there's four weeks this batch, right? Two, four... It'll be the same again next yeah. time, yeah. Three threes and a four. I'm like, why not just do, like, you know, like, four one-hour, uh, maybe the last one's a bit longer, like, episodes, yeah. theoretically. It, it could be just down to the way it was ordered, right? Yeah. I, I just wonder, if we get a season four, do, do they play around with, like, no, the, the first episode can just be an hour long. Like, you know, they'll, they'll order... 26 episodes, as it were, of 25 minute chunks, but they don't necessarily They'll have to put out 25, yeah. you know, individual segments. They can they can just do, here's an hour, and that counts for three. Yeah, I mean, it's no different to when you get a double episode, right, of something, yeah. and it counts as two episodes in the order, but they still put it out as a double. Yeah. Um, especially if you, you're opening your finale, I feel like you're justified in doing like a special double triple yeah it's typically where you see them most often extravaganza and if they're going to do this thing where they split the season in half which they might not do in future seasons i think this one was maybe just because I, no i think it's because they yeah. doom patrol wasn't ready and neither was the back half of this season and it was like well we can kind of solve both problems yeah i think that's why it was split in half but um yeah because i feel like maybe the, the the almost the better thing to do i'd be curious and is like how about instead of 26 25 minute episodes we just do 13 you know 50 minute episodes i'd be i'd be yeah. curious to see what they do with that no me too it'd be really interesting like treat treat it like the the live action shows you'll give it the, the full 13 full episode kind of yeah. treatment yeah no that's true do you know what i'm gonna say yeah i'm already annoyed Why? that there's gonna be a break of like three four months whatever it is only three three yeah I mean, this is every month. 12, 12 episodes I mean, only 12, 12 13 episodes that's just three months or three and a little bit oh, okay fair enough <laughs> i'm I'm, I'm thinking the week either side as well you know oh maybe yeah but i mean you know either way simple logic i i already know i'm gonna get to the end of this season and go god damn it i want the rest next week <laughs> i wonder i wonder if it loses it i wonder if it's a nice cliffhanger given that they maybe didn't plan for it is all, it a nice all i'm saying is doom patrol suddenly has a lot to live up to following this <laughs> Hey, Doom Patrol's looking promising. Oh, it might do, but I mean, Ed's got to come out swinging now. Hmm. Wait, are you telling me that you, you like this more than Titans? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> I think I like this more than pretty much any other show we've ever done on this. Bar barring like Elseworlds or something like that. Alright. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, uh, that that was the Young Justice uh, triple triple premiere. Uh, so, good. so we'll be back with the the next triple of episodes, next trio of episodes next week. Uh, but we can move on to other things for this week. It's so good, it's made you forget language. All right then. So next up, we can go into the archive content because it is the off season. So we only, uh, I suppose we must. We only have the the one new thing to talk about, uh, even though there was three episodes of it. Uh, we do have the Flash season one episode three. It's called Watching the Detectives. This is the nineteen nineties Flash, uh, with John Wesley Ship as Barry Allen. Uh, and this episode brings in corrupt district attorneys and and uh, you know the mob that runs a mafia. Uh, not a mafia, so I could, well, it does, has a mafia too, but it runs a casino, specifically. Casino. Yes. Illegal casinos. Um, and we have Dick Miller shows up in a small role, which delighted me because I like Dick Miller a lot. What's not to like? Yeah. Uh, he's he's the, the, the card playing hustler uh, in this episode. But he, uh, he's a. I mean, but the main thing as well is that we have this investigative. Uh, you know, that's, that's basically this PI uh, who's tracking, trying to track down who the Flash is. 
and she's actually been paid off by the district attorney to find out the secret identity because he wants to blackmail the flash so she's just doing her job essentially but she says a lot she actually says i'm just doing my job anytime anyone questions what she's doing i'm just doing my job yeah i think technically she's a journalist because she shows up at like at crime scenes right and doesn't get questioned too much uh yeah maybe i wonder if she's just blending in though with all the other journalists who's kind of maybe yeah. yeah but uh yeah, so Barry, like, when he meets her, kind of like, oh, I kind of like you. you, you nice. He kind of hits it off with her a little yes, bit. Yes, because this, this Barry is, is kind of a schmoozer. He kind of is. Uh, and he's very upset with his friend because he sets him up with... Because cause he's, he's got a, you know, what's, 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 uh, it was Sabrina, I think, the, the the girl that he was dating, Julia was dating. Uh, but he's like, oh, it's Jul- you know, Sabrina's got a friend. Uh, you, you come double date. And Barry doesn't want to do it. And then he eventually gives in. And the reason why I didn't want to do it is because everyone that he's been set up with, with Julio, uh, has ended up being weird in some way. You know, uh, yeah. it, it describes someone with lots of phobias, like weird phobias, like scared of suitcases and, uh, and things That's like that. Weird. Um, Imagine being scared of more than one weird thing, though. I know it's, it's bizarre. So he meets this woman at the, at the you know, the, the the club or whatever it is, and or a bar. The first thing she says to him is. You have an interesting aura. <laughs> and he's just like, Julio, you're a dead man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah, well, this is this is one of those moments where, yeah, he's kind of a dick for just saying this in front of her. Oh, no, he takes him, he takes absolutely him, on his side. He takes him to, to the side. He doesn't say it right in front of her, to be fair. It's pretty clear, though, isn't it? To be fair. Uh, also, I love the, the, the woman who's like investigating him is like, so blatantly caught and he's apart in Barry's apartment and she's like pretending to be the cable guy, essentially. And, and, she, and he's just like, Yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, he's like, Oh yeah, the landlord let me in. He's like, oh yeah, that's normal. <laughs> yeah, it's like come on, can we let's go on a date, yeah? Yeah. Dinner now. And she she runs out. Uh so she does find out who he is. I mean honestly like once she's she decides to try and try and catch him specifically, it makes mostly sense to me what she does to to find out and confirm it. Her leap to thinking it's him, though, at the start, felt a bit weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, oh, oh, he's not there. Yeah, because she calls the police department to ask for Barry Allen and they say, oh, he's not here. And he's like, oh, that must mean he's the Flash, because the Flash is here saving people at a fire. But I'm like, yeah, but what led you to even think it was him in the first place? What, yeah, why Why did you ask for Barry Allen? Yeah, what, what made you think it was him? Um. So so that was kind of weird. But yeah, so she, she, she figures out he's the Flash, and the DA basically blackmails him and, and, and demands that he, you know, do, do yeah. things, like go, go do, after the do mob. The shady stuff. Yeah, go after the mob, rig the casino games, that kind of thing. Which was kind of a fun scene. Yeah. It was an alright scene, yeah, he's basically going around and, like, you know, making himself win repeatedly. Uh, uh, I like how he let everyone win before he left. Yeah, just to really piss off the, the bad guy. Yeah. yeah. So the investigators investigate him, and she, she all, t- all right, Carl's smirking at me. I am, because I'm not letting this slide. <laughs> All right, so halfway through discussing this episode of The Flash, something dawned on me that was that was troubling. It was troubling to me that I, I couldn't quite remember how the episode ended. And I thought, I was thinking to myself, why, why could I not remember why how the episode ended? Does anyone in the audience like to have to guess <laughs> at this point? It turns out I never actually finished watching the episode. Um... So just the thing, I was watching it, I think, on Wednesday, and, like, I, I, you know, I was getting tired, there was maybe 10 minutes left, and I, I, I turned it off, I thought, I'll just, I'll finish it tomorrow, um, I just, I forgot, I, I, I assumed I'd watched the whole thing, I'd watched enough of it, I assumed I'd watched the whole episode, so we had to cut there for a second while I went away and watched the last seven minutes. Yeah. It happens, alright, it happens. So now it's really fresh in your mind. How does it sound? <laughs> well, the other thing I, I was going to say from just the, the episode in general is that the investigator, whenever she's investigating like anything, there's this really like cheesy, like kind of sexy music playing. That's right, the best part about the episode. It, it's it's like um, you know the the, the, the drawn out kind of horns and stuff. Yeah, just, just just to sort of it's just like oh she's an investigator but she's a sexy investigator it's great stuff um, I don't know if great is the word I'd use for it I think it's the most enjoyable thing in the episode uh, but so so Barry's sitting on her then he's mad at her but then she sees that the flash like saves the day because he stops someone from killing his wife or whatever <laughs> I think it's the wife killing the husband wife killing the husband 
and then like she's like oh shit he's actually a hero maybe i shouldn't have like you know outed him like that and she then realizes i told the mob yeah and then she realizes the mob yeah the da is going to have her killed so she goes and she's go, they're also going to kill um mcgee because you know tina because he's like oh no this 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 information i've got on who the flash is i want that to be exclusive so anyone who knows is getting is getting whacked uh so she actually goes and saves tina which makes us like her a little bit more you know just isn't you know on a, on a script level in theory that's yeah. what it does it, it stops you hating her yeah um and then ultimately she, she tr- tries to like get evidence on the bad guys she almost gets killed barry swoops in and saves the day right after he saves the day because one of the things that's happened is that there's the da and the mob or have they've hired an arsonist to to burn this uh, property on this area of town because they want to buy it cheap. So it's a whole yeah. real estate scam. You it's because it's uh, they're going to be given a historical you know mm-hmm. uh, landmark status where they'll be renovated and kept you know in the condition that they are. But if you know, if they happen to burn down before that ta- you know been given that status, well, I mean now now it's just empty space. Which is the weirdest side of the episode actually because they get the the arsonist they've hired is this he's an arsonist but he's also like a like a a rampant evangelical like spouting the word of god as he does it and when the flash shows up to stop him like just before we get to like him saving the investigator he he's like oh it's the red devil devil red is the devil himself you know like the antichrist is here to stop me um and i thought that was a kind of weird scene because he says fire at the building he's in and the flash like we get a super speed scene of him just like just unraveling a fire hose and i thought this is a really weird scene of like showing his speed off. Like, I mean, we, I mean, anyone can do this. I mean, he's doing it faster, sure, but it doesn't feel like he's gotten so fast that it's actually really accomplishing that much in the sense of like, oh, it'll put out the fire quicker. And then not even to mention the fact that the Flash is using a fire hose to put out a fire. When I think of the Flash putting out a fire, I'm like tor- tornado arms, you know, to create some wind. I mean, yeah, you know, I'm just, you know yeah. it, was, it was an odd scene. It was an odd Look, scene. All I'm saying is. The 90s hadn't developed a, a keen understanding of physics yet. Are you argue? Are you trying to tell me that the current Flash TV show has a good understanding <laughs> of physics? I think it's got a better understanding of physics. I don't know. I, I feel look, like just look, take the lasers out of the equation. <laughs> Stop! Don't go there. I don't know. I, I feel like just not touching it at all is arguably better than completely obliterating it <laughs> every chance you get <laughs> that might be fair um but he saves the day um that was the other thing at one point he like he, he picks up the, the roulette wheel to like stop a bullet like to shield himself and i'm like you're the flash move out of the way move out of the way yeah <laughs> I, I i guess the island is he doesn't want him he wanted to hit anything else sure because have we seen him catching bullets yet not in this show, no. No, I didn't think so. So it's like uh, by stopping it, it's like oh, there's no collateral. It can't hit anything else. Whereas if he runs out of the way, well, there's still whatever's behind them. I I like the investigator though because she she like, kicks a couple of the bad guys. She gets like, a yeah. couple of kicks in. Uh, but basically the DA is like, oh, I know who you are, Barry, and you will never kill me because you're too much of a boy scout. And he gets in his car and his car blows up because the mobster was pissed that he was being like, you know, used. Because the DA is like, oh, I, I own the Flash now, so you work for me. And he, like, he slaps him in the face. And so the mobster had him whacked, which, so on the one hand, I immediately said to myself, oh, that's convenient. But yeah. it, it was honestly set up well enough that I actually don't have a thing. I don't think, I don't think it feels contrived. It feels... Of course the mobs had him whacked. Yeah, it feels yeah. reasonable that the mob did that to him. It was, it was yeah. kind of set up in the plot, so I can't really it complain was. too much. And then Barry and the investigator kiss at the end. Like, she, she they, they make out. Um, uh, Barry's getting it on with anyone. Pretty much. He's a bit of a horn dog in this. Um, so I wonder if Lock, Lock Hartley, the investigator, I wonder if she's sticking around. Yeah, I'm not sure it feels like she is. Yeah, it but... feels like they set up a character who's at least going to be a girlfriend for a while. No, it definitely feels like that. I just don't know how true that will be, given the nature of the show. Like, you could come back next episode, she's just gone, never mentioned again. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just checking to see if she's in more episodes. Yeah, oh, that's a good plan to see her. Uh, oh, she's, she's, she's in three total. That's enough for the introduction, an episode where she's around, and then why she leaves. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, interestingly, both the episodes that she's in after this are both trickster episodes. Okay, so they're quite spread out episodes then. Yeah, I don't think the next one's a trickster episode. Uh, nah, next one's not. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, I mean, it could be, but it's not. It's not the, the, the other two have tricks on the title, which is why I'm, I know that. <laughs> right. So it's not those trickster episodes, yeah. at least. So, yeah, well, that was a flash. It was, you know, there was more goofy eighty stuff. Yeah, it was fine. Um, apparently, it was forgettable enough that you just assumed you'd finished it. <laughs> it really did. Not, not a real high mark on its quality, is it? It's like it's it's so inoffensively bad, though. It's like it's just like generic TV quality. It is, yeah. It's not like oh, I hate watching this. Yeah. Oh, I need to be drunk to watch this. It's just kind of there. I don't get angry at it. Like it's just kind of like it, it's true. It does a lot of things where I'm like, oh, okay, the, you know, the, like Iris being like written out of the show after one episode. Yeah, yeah. That should piss me off as a comic fan, but I'm just kind of like, eh. from this era. Yeah. So, it's hard to hold it against it too much, right? It's like, well, I mean, you didn't know any better. It was the 90s. Yeah, 90s were a, a bad time for comic book movies. Very bad yeah. time. Batman Returns, for example. It's a gloriously bad time. <laughs> so, that was, that was The Flash. Episode 3. Yeah, now we have the main event. Here we have Gotham. <laughs> Season 1, Episode 3. It's called... The Balloon Man. Oh yes, we're going there. The classic character. Okay, so I hate the idea that there's someone running around the city that the police are, or the press are calling something man before Batman exists. I hate that. I hate that Bruce growing up sees like headlines saying the Balloon Man, and not only that. Of course, it does the thing at the end where Bruce kind of admires the the vigilantism of the of the balloon man a little bit but when alfred questions him he's like no but he did a wrong thing he was killing people he shouldn't be killing yeah, people yeah 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 well, it wasn't that he was a vigilante or anything yeah. like that. Just, just, just don't kill them and because because we watched this together we've started watching this together as connor gets drunk that's become the, the thing now um it's way more fun this and way. right before bruce said that line i said oh my god they're going to do something really on the nose about how he feels about balloon man it's going to like foreshadow his batman and it was like they shouldn't have killed. Like he had the right idea, but he shouldn't be killing people. And I'm like, oh my god! Like he shouldn't already have these ideas this like well defined in his head. No, this is episode three. His parents were murdered like a week ago. Do you know, what? No, you know, I have a question. What? How the damn hell is he not Batman already by season five? <laughs> if he's already at this point. <laughs> yeah, he's, I mean, it's halfway through season two, tops at this pace. Is he Bat Boy first? Do we get like, <laughs> is it like, is it like a transitional I, period? I really hope not. So, Balloon Man straps a weather balloon to someone and they, 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 go, they go flying into the, the stratosphere. Which is fine until it happens to a cop. Who, it's a dirty cop because we meet the cop in the station at first, and he's a bit of an asshole. He's corrupt, as you do, and yeah, the first one's like uh, just a corrupt businessman sort yeah. of dude. So, right. so, so, so whatever. He's he's got nothing he can do. But this cop, and I was looking for it because I remember being annoyed by this the first time it aired because I saw this episode, of course, back when it first aired. Is I, I said to myself, he's a cop. He's got a gun. Why doesn't he just shoot the balloon before he gets too high? And I was paying attention for it. I was looking for it. You can see his gun in his, in his holster, like, hanging from his... like As he's upside down, his jacket's hanging down. You can see the gun <laughs> flapping around as well. And I'm like, pull out the gun and shoot the balloon. You tit. Why I think this show is trying to teach us, if, 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 if there must be a lesson, is that poly people... People are idiots. Mm -hmm. All people. And it gets even worse because later on, so Gordon and Bullock kind of track down where these balloons might have came from. They track down the person who's behind it. And they have a bit of a, a confrontation with this character. And eventually, um, the, 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 the villain gets strapped to the balloon. The, the, the final weather can, balloon. Can we talk about you know, the, the laugh of, of when they learn that the bodies come back? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Because the, they're interrogating this guy uh, who's like, related to the weather balloons. And they're like, they're like, oh, now the bodies are up there with yeah, no it's evidence. A, it's so a perfect crime. The they're in the stratosphere, do. and he's like, no, oh, I mean they'll, they'll fall back down. And they're like, wait, what? It's like, well, you know how weather balloons work, right? They they pop, if, you know, once they get so high. And he's like, huh? And then it immediately cuts to a scene of like one of the bodies just dropping, and it's this ridiculous CG shot of it the body falls. Fall. I swear, right onto someone. It, it almost does, um, and that was pretty funny. But so so the the villain gets strapped to the the balloon. And 
and Jim, the smart little bastard that he is, decides to. Now, you could argue here that that Jim's this intentionally because he wants Bullock to make the right choice because because he he runs and grabs the, the guy who's getting you know the bad guy as he's drifting off into the air and he tells Bullock as he's holding on as he's going up with him to shoot the balloon and Bullock's like, no, just let go, let him go, let him die. He's a bad guy because uh, Bullock's you know a corrupt cop as as we've established and he's like no no you need to shoot the balloon but here's the thing i don't think it plays that he was doing this intentionally this plays just as no he was trying to grab him and all i could think was jim you had your gun out a second ago you could have shot the balloon yourself you didn't have to jump for him you could have just done what you're telling him to do once he's grabbed on and he's holding on i can understand why okay i don't want to move my other arm oh sure yeah yeah but that and then you're like bullock make the damn choice but he he could have just did did what he's telling bullock to do now a minute ago yeah, just do that in the first place. Problem solved, right? Don't jump on. I mean, hell, there's a, there's a, there's a whole scene before they talk to the bad guy where the balloon's just sitting there on the ground. It's like, just pop it then. <laughs> just so there's no danger. <laughs> it would have made more sense, wouldn't it? It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Um, that was the main plot, more or less. Other than that, Montoya and Barbara have more weird, awkward scenes where yeah. they, they actually almost kiss at one point like Renee goes in for a kiss and Barbara has to like fend her off and it's just like what it feels is uncomfortable because it, it doesn't feel like there's any reciprocation on Barbara's end there's no reciprocation they have no chemistry it feels like this forced weird drama backstory um, yeah. and she's and this is the thing so Montoya and her partner Chris go to um, Fish Mooney and Fish Mooney implies well that's it implies she straight away says that, that Jim Gordon killed penguin right killed cobblepot yeah. and for some reason these two professional the, supposedly the the you know the, the the legitimate police officers right as opposed to the just go yeah sure yeah of course they, he did they basically just accept it and montoya goes straight to barbara and says oh uh, gordon killed killed a, a witness yeah he's a bad guy he did it and she gets really like angry about it as well when she's telling us and i guess you could argue that she is not thinking clear she's doing this because of her feelings for barbara she sees this as a way to like convince barbara that to give him up so she'll come back around to her arms again i don't feel this in the scene i'm just devil's advocate in it yeah yeah but i hate the whole scene um yeah and i got co- i got a new uh drinking rule though which is in this episode every time there's a penguin slashing slash stabbing that, that is true the subplot with the penguin which is easily the most entertaining thing in this show so far, is how viciously murderous he is. Because he, he kills a guy at the start, uh, takes his money and then buys some food at a food stand, like a food truck with it. Yeah. Um, that was amusing. Uh, he goes for a job at the Fal- no, I'm sorry, the Maroni restaurant. Because Maroni, if, you, if you're not familiar with Batman lore, Maroni's like the, the other crime family. You get the Falcones and you got the Maronis. And in, in this show, they seem to be kind of rival a bit of rivals um, they are at this stage yeah i yeah. mean which is again is, is something that is off and on in the comics it, yeah it's off and on, on. So some, depending sometime, on the, the context of the the time some sometimes they're in more cahoots sometimes they're a bit more i, I mean it's just, you know mob stuff but um he's work, got to work there he wants to work his way up the ranks and he's told by the guy running the restaurant that he doesn't have the right shoes and he turns around and looks at this this cook who's sitting there and just looks down at his feet and he smiles and I went, oh. <laughs> I just started laughing. Bring, bring on the stabbing. Because you know he's going to stab him. And stab him he does. How many people... Oh, we don't see this one, do we? No, we don't see this one. How many people... How many bodies are on Gordon's consciousness now? Because he... he Conscience, rather. I do it all the time. I always make that mistake. You do. Um, how many bodies are on his conscience now? Because he... Like, if he, if he had killed Penguin... There's at least four people now, maybe five, who would be alive that aren't. <laughs> oh my god, so we got the, the the two from the truck last episode. Two from the truck, the guy who was eating the sandwich when he first got out of the water. Yeah. Um, the, the cook and the guy at the start of this one. Five. That's five, at least. We have, we have five, five confirmed five kills. Five confirmed. Five confirmed kills. Uh, so when Penguin shows up at the end of the episode to, to Gordon, which is funny because right before he shows up, because this is the cliffhanger is that Penguin shows up at his door and is like, hey Jim, remember me old buddy, old pal? Right before that is when Barbara's kind of like, you know, broaching the subject of like, you know, has Gordon done something unthinkable? And 
it kind of gets resolved because when she kind of when he like brings up those bad things happen and he and she kind of like oh have you done something bad and he's like oh do you think i could the way he answers seems to convince her that you know that it's all bullshit Montoya's talking crap yeah fine but i thought it was weird that penguin shows up right after because you feel like that would be the proof like if she was still doubting it like no she says oh, no i i agree because montoya's like asking about cobble pot yeah right uh, and she never gets that far yeah, because because if she's like, yeah, but what about Cobblepot? And then the door goes, and it's Cobblepot. It's like, well, there you go, done deal. It's pr- proven that you didn't kill him. They're easy. Yeah. Um, well, that's too easy. But instead, it's already solved <laughs> before he shows up. It was just, it was just a weird point. It is weird. Yeah. It's just a weird point. But uh, uh, other than that, Falcone still, you know, you know, showing, you know, showing Mooney that he's still in power and like, you know, saying things like, I can't wait till Mooney's gone. <clears throat> oh, she's hamming up something awful. Yeah, there, see, there are shows where people ham it up, and I love it. I'm into it, but not on this one. It's not mm. working. Yeah, it, really, really, really bad. I, it, it's hard to. Do, do you know why I think it doesn't work in particular? Because mm-hmm. she's the only one hamming it up to that extent. Yeah, sure. Every, everyone else is yeah is fairly reserved. Even if the plots are stupid, everyone else is being fairly reserved. Even Penguin with his crazy slabbins doesn't feel hammy. S- strange and just weird but hammy isn't the word i'd use playfully psychotic <laughs> yeah playfully psychotic um i mean his mother was hammy i hated his mother she was awful. Oh, okay yeah, yeah but she's, um, a, she's a psycho she doesn't count yeah um no i mean i, I think again i've said this like donald Logan's bullock is my favorite like you know performance because he feels like he should i suspect that won't change yeah that'll probably be pretty consistent uh, barring any new characters that are introduced later that might may pop yeah, up. Yeah, we got we got a we got a Joker or three to get through yet. Oh god, yeah. And it hurts because I know there's good actors who end up in this show as well. I can't remember any, but I'll believe you. Well, we we just talked about her on a different show, but uh, Marina Bakarin, she she's Leslie Tompkins in this at some point. Oh is she? Oh yeah. You, oh shit! Yeah, I remember that now. And Gordon, Gordon, she she dates Gordon. I think so there's a whole romance. <laughs> Here's a character from the comics with a name that you'll recognise. Therefore, she will be a love interest for God. TV in a nutshell. Yep, TV, TV logic in a nutshell. Um, well, Selena Kell was... I mean, Selena Kell basically showed Gordon where the murders happened, even though he knew that. And the only new thing she gives him is that she tossed the guy's wallet uh, down the sewer to prove that she was here. And just makes him go in the shit. Which is a really weird, because he's really annoyed about his shoes, and he's he's trying not to get anything on his shoes. And then... He picks up the wallet with his bare hands, which is covered in shit. Yeah, wear some gloves, dude. <laughs> oh, like, At least put a bag over your hand. I, I would happily put my shoes in it over my hands. Yeah, me too. Do, does he not have an evidence bag on him? Because in case he, he's out here looking for evidence, he'll have something to bag it up in so that he doesn't get all his fingerprints over it. I, I guess he's assuming she's full of shit. No pun intended. I mean, that does, that's unacceptable. <laughs> well, I don't want to tell you. I mean, don't, why, why would you pick up evidence with your bare hands? <clears throat> what are you doing? <laughs> well, because the, the evidence in the question isn't really about. Uh, the murder itself was just about proving. It's still, yeah, I know, but you know. You know, she said she threw it down there. He finds that the ID matches the guy who got mugged. I mean, it does. It's not the point, though, is it? He should still be carrying them in case there was evidence. Sure, sure. Yeah, and at least in this case, I, I, I mean, would it have fingerprints on this being covered in shit? Probably not. I wouldn't have thought so. No, I wouldn't either. But look, my point was simply that he should have some sort of baggage container on his persons in case there was evidence and therefore does not have to get his hands covered in literal shit so you enjoyed this episode then oh it was a blast <laughs> oh it was so terrible also yeah. like i like that they're, they're, they're involving arkham into the plot but i feel like this is the third episode in a row when i've where i've heard the phrase the reopening arkham about 10 times over the course of the episode they re- i feel like this was the worst as well yeah yeah it was it was really obtuse this episode it was like when arkham opens again oh when arkham when arkham it was like every five minutes they were mentioning arkham opening again yeah which would be fine if it was the episode about arkham opening again but it isn't <laughs> do you know the worst i don't i don't know if it's the episode it opens but 
I distinctly remember the ending of the the mid season because that's where I got up to and left. So it's like the last thing I remember about the show was very heavily to do with Arkham being very freshly open, maybe even in that very mm. episode. Uh, oh, oh, here's something I noticed this episode. I, I never noticed the captain's name before, uh, but the captain in the show is Sarah Essen, which, going back to the whole, it's, here's a name from the comics that might be recognised, so we'll put her in this this role, even though this role makes no sense for her, given that what she's supposed to be. Because in the comics, Sarah Essen is a woman that Gordon falls for um, while he's still married, and then later actually marries Sarah Essen who's of a similar age to him, maybe even a yes. bit younger. Uh, so the fact that she's like the older captain who's in charge and... Just because. Just, right. just because, because, it's, because Gotham. Because it's a name. It's a name you recognise, so we'll just throw them in something, even though it makes no sense. I mean, it was the same when uh, they, they had Linda uh, date Barry for a couple of episodes in The Flash. Like, the, the Flash hasn't been as bad for it, but that was that was an example on that show that bugged me. It was like... It, it, yeah, at least Linda was recognisably some form of Linda. Sure. But I could go... Yeah, I could, it's weird that she's Dane Barry, but I can see Linda in this character. Yeah, but that's Wally's love interest, so it felt weird. It is. It did feel weird. I just but did... I guess they just, at that point, they thought, well, we'll never get him, Wally. They did Wally, like, the same season. It was quite a bit later, wasn't it? Okay, it was the next season, but it was they they set up the the, the possibility for it in the season though. Yeah, I guess they just didn't know if they were going to be allowed, so they went, "Eh, we'll just do this now." Ah, uh, no, no bullshit. It's it's that lack of forward thinking that that bugs me. Um, but no, it's just an example. I mean, this Again, show is going to have many an example of lack of forward thinking. It, it will, but I'm just it really bugs me when they say that's this is a name from the comics that people will recognise. We're going to not make it that character. We're just going to throw that name on any random character just because it's a name you know. And it mm. means nothing. And all it does is piss me off. It doesn't make me go, oh, that name from the comics. It makes me go, no, that's not that character. Stop it. That's Stop fair. it. Yeah, I can't argue with that. It is annoying. <sighs> um, I at least appreciate they didn't make a big deal about telling us this. You know, all the other ones have referenced. I'm going, oh, who this person is. This one, okay, there was a, there was a name plaque on a desk. Hmm. That's fair. It was it was less offensive just by the nature of that they didn't shove it in my face. Yeah, uh, I don't know what they're doing with Ivy Pepper. That's one step further. It's not even no, just the just, name. Just, just wait for Catwoman. Oh God! You're gonna you're gonna have to go and read this headline after we finish this. I think I am. Uh, but final thing we're talking about though. Uh, is an episode of Batman the Animated Series, uh, just to round out in a good thing, because we need it. Yeah, we, we we like to end positive. That's why we usually end on Arrow, obviously. So, so Batman... We don't end on Arrow, usually. No, we used to, though, didn't we? Uh, Batman the Animated Series, this is uh, called The Last Laugh. Um, and this one's particularly special to me, actually, because I remember I had this episode taped on VHS off TV. Uh, is this that one that you watched repeatedly? Yeah, I saw this one like a hundred times, probably, when I was a kid. Yeah, okay. Um... And watch it again. So the plot of this is that Joker's got like a, a ship which is attached to a submarine, but the, the the ship's like a it's like a garbage dump essentially. It's just like on a boat. <laughs> yeah. And it's transporting waste, but he's got his laughing gas all mixed into it. So it's like the sense like making people do crazy things and laugh and whatnot you know, throughout the city as he's as he's you know floating on by. Yeah. Um, and Batman of course comes and stops him, and that's that's, that's basically the episode. But, um, oh, are we done? <laughs> well, that's just the gist of it. But what I like about this, one of the things I like about this the most, there's a lot of things I like about it, but one of the things that I like the most that kicked in right away the music in this episode, there's this drum beat that makes it feel like shit's going down. Yeah. And I really like this this drum beat. And not only the drum beat, but even even Batman's theme, I felt like was used more prominently in this one, where you know his heroic theme from Shirley Walker was like integrated into it a bit this, more. The this drum beat theme <clears throat> that we have, <clears throat> the the one you're referring to, this is a recurring theme because I remember this one so distinctly. And I'm it wondering, probably is. did I just watch this episode a ton of times? Because I don't remember any other moments where I can think of it in the in the show. But I'm just I remember this music so yeah. particularly that I'm like maybe I just watched this episode yeah. loads as well. Also, I think this might be... Because obviously we had Joker at the Christmas episode a couple ago. But I think this might be the first one that has his theme in it. Did that one have his theme? I don't remember. The... Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but this one did. Uh, so it was doing a lot of great things musically. Um, mm. 
Sassy Alfred makes an April Fool's joke where he 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 draws <laughs> Bruce a bath. And then... I have a question. Why is it called drawing a bath instead of running a bath? Because you run water. I have no idea. It know. just even even because obviously when he's tired, I remembered the punchline, I was like, "Why is it called that?" It, it was bugging me. But he, he drew a picture of a bath, and he's like April Fools, um, and of course it's book ended. like you dick. I'll yeah. just get a shower. And it's book ended, of course, at the end because uh, the, you know Bruce makes a joke where Alfred, when he get infected by the gas, he smashed a bunch of stuff in the mansion, specifically a vase, uh, a, a, a expensive vase. And Bruce goes, oh, don't worry, I'll just take it out of your pay for the next, you know, three years. <laughs> and, and, and Alfred's I'll, like, yes, sir. Uh, do, 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 do you know what the sad part about it is? Is I thought it was clearly a joke, and Alfred was supposed to just laugh it off, but he takes it seriously because but it's coming from Bruce. second-guessed it, yeah. yeah. And then Bruce turns around and goes, hey, April Fool's Alfred. Um, but now, uh, he's in the shower, he's in the shower, and he's, like, he hears that there's a lot of people, you know, laughing and doing crazy shit. And he's, you know... It's like, that doesn't sound like Gotham. People laughing. Yeah, and he's like, sounds like the Joker, uh, which leads to him getting his bat boat out and going after the Joker, and it leads to some submarine combat. There's, there's, there's a robot clown under Joker's henchman. Yeah, I like the scene of Joker going looting. You know, when he's infected the, the street and they're all going nuts, he just comes out with he's got his like his uh his fishbowl helmet on to, to yeah. protect him from the gas, and he's just smashing windows and taking jewelry. It's delightful. It is. Uh, On top of that, this episode has what may be the most iconic GIF slash meme from this show. Go on. Batman on the railing at the end. Oh, yeah, when he's like... Wait, so, well, why did he jump to that? We didn't get to that in the plot. Because... Fine. Uh, because once this kept going, I, I very started to distinctly remember the various parts of it, because after the boat stuff, we get to this, you know, the, the ace, like, waste disposal plant, and I always vividly remember the conveyor belts, because they end up with Joker and Batman on the conveyor belt, yeah. and then go down the chute, and Batman's, like, hanging off the ledge, and Joker, like, hits the lever so that all the trash starts coming down, and, like, Batman has to, like, grapple and whatnot. Mm. Um, but the part you're referring to is where Joker trips and goes over the ledge, and he's dangling from, like, the rope, and Batman hesitates and just you know you know does the you know the the hand on the face kind of thing and smirks when joker's like you wouldn't let me die would you bats yeah it's like well let's have a think about it uh but yeah he pulls him up and uh that's that and then we get our final little joke at the end of the episode uh but it's like i, I like this one a lot i think this was much better than the joker's other episode i, I like his plots here a, a lot more I think it's funnier. I think the the music adds a lot to it in terms of the tone, um, both in terms of the the drum beat stuff, but also the fact that anytime Batman does anything heroic, that hero theme kicks in and it feels great. It does. It does. I mean, it, it's in danger of overplaying it. Nah, but... <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> fair, enough, fair enough. I mean, I'm just thinking. I I heard that a lot in the space of twenty minutes here. Yeah, but I, I I feel like cartoons like this, you, you do use them a lot more frequently. I get it. I get that they do. I'm just not don't know whether they necessarily should. Nah, I ain't getting sick of it. <laughs> I ain't getting sick of it. Uh, and then the uh, action was really good. Uh, the fighting, because, you know, he's fighting the, the henchman and he's winning, but then the big robot dude is, like, too tough. Uh, and Batman, like, actually, like, you know, almost breaks his hand when he punches him. Uh, Joker, at one point, like, when, they, when they, they beat him, they put him in a... In a what do we call it? A barrel. And he's like, oh, I don't want Batman to, to suffocate and we'll, we'll uh, punch him holes. Punch air holes yeah. And he starts stabbing it violently and it, it cuts to the inside. you've got like, Batman kind of ducking it. around. But it's actually yeah. it's actually kind of a dark little moment because the way he's just like, you know, just stabbing at the barrel is just so visceral. It is, yeah. Uh, that I was like, oh, man, this actually feels kind of dark. Uh, and then, then they, they throw him in the water. He's like, oh, I guess those air holes are also water holes. Oh, well. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, this is so, a good line, though. Yeah, um, but no, that's just, that's just, this is my favorite episode so far. Okay, I can see it. I, I, I think the last one, um, nothing to fear. Um, obviously, it's a great one as well. Like these, these two are the two best ones yeah. so far. I but... think I still prefer that one a little bit, but I mean, like I say, I've got a lot of nostalgia for this one because it was one that I I seen a hundred yeah, times. Yeah, I, I don't have quite the same nostalgia for. I mean, you know, not this specific episode. Hmm. But um, no, love it. Uh, I'm I'm glad it holds up. I'm glad that the one that I saw a lot as a kid holds up. Yeah, there's a danger that it was just you were a kid, right? Yeah, but it, it does actually hold up quite well. And so. 
less even just that you were a kid and more so just that's the one you had access to mm. so you made do so yeah uh but that is that is batman the anime series which does bring an end to the show it brings an end to this week's episode episode 61 of television for the multiverse uh let us know what you thought of young justice and indeed any of the archive episodes we talked about in the comments um of course we have other shows and other things you can go check out um, we have Comics for the Multiverse, which is our DC Comics podcast where me, Connor, and Matt talk about the comics every week. Uh, me and Connor also started a companion show to that called Elsewhere in the Multiverse, where we talk about Marvel comics and indie comics. So a lot of, a lot of comic content. A lot, a lot of The Multiverse family is uh, full and alive with the sound of music, yeah. as it were. So check out that stuff, uh, all TV stuff. Uh, Star Trek Discovery Season 2 is starting next week, so we'll be reviewing that if you're into Star Trek. Yeah, we uh, just did the short treks that yeah. have been over the last couple of months. Uh, yeah. they, were, they were interesting. Obviously, the playlist series that you find on YouTube, uh, the, the audio feed for that is a uh, Viewer's Log uh, Modern Series, or Star Trek Viewer's Log Modern Series is the, is the audio feed for that. Um, as opposed to the classic series, where we're, we work through the classic Star Trek shows. Um, but of course, you can support us by liking and subscribing, but even more so by going over to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv and giving us a, a dollar or more per month, uh, should you wish, should you find it in your heart um, to, to be a hero and not a villain. Uh, be, be a character from Young Justice, do not be a character from Titans, because Titans ain't giving anyone anything. Yeah, th those people aren't patrons of anyone. No. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, but that's us. So thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching superhero TV shows and whatnot. And always remember that sometimes we screw things up for the better.